Hello and welcome to this tutorial and today we're going to be having a look at how to be able to navigate your data files in the newly released Race Studio 3 analysis. Now many of you may have watched the tutorial which talked about importing your data. If you haven't, I'll put a link up here in the top right hand side so you can watch that. And many of you may have actually used the beta software but what we're working on now is a newly released 2022 version of these videos that really looks at the production version of the software. So today we're going to have a look at what's called the test database or the library of all of your sessions and really navigate through that to look at some of the new features uh, that are available in the new software itself. And so we're here in Race Studio 3 and um, we left off the last tutorial by importing some data and now what we're going to have a look at is how to be able to navigate this data uh, on the actual page and what we see in the software. So we're going to start on the left hand side over here and this is where it's going to log all of your events. These represent um, an event, it may be a day, it may be a race meeting, which will aggregate a lot of the sessions together to be able to represent somewhere or something that you were doing. So in this case, I was testing at Silverstone National. Um, it was uh, Formula Ford 1600 testing. All of this information was available when I typed it in when I downloaded the data. This was just me adding in some components. Uh, the date was automatically logged and it, and it sort of records how many sessions. These sessions here represent the three sessions that are here. And similarly, if I click down to this one here, it's just one session and it's just one session that, that's here. So you can see where you've got multiple sessions from that particular event. Uh, other aspects of the view here, and if you're very familiar with Race Studio 3, we won't go into too much detail, but what you could do is you can click down here to set up recent sessions. You can start with smart sessions, which sort of log things by things like racetrack, for example, or manual collections where you can say, these are my best sessions, for example, that I did in 2021 by each of the tracks that I went to within my season. And so you may be able to set that up. So you can start to sort and filter many of these sessions that are here. Now, if you're familiar with how Race Studio 3 works and you've been using it for a while, uh, that feature hasn't necessarily changed too much. But what I want to do for the purposes of today is to navigate some of the new stuff that's here. So once we've got an idea in terms of the events, the next thing we need to look at is what information we've got housed in terms of the sessions that are here. And so this really represents each of the sessions. Very similar to Race Studio 2 analysis, it shows things like the best lap time, the time of day, the driver, uh, the vehicle, all the things that you log when you download the particular file. But there's a few other things that you can now start to work on. And if you've used the beta or if you've seen some of the videos that have been created, you may have seen additional information on the page. And so what we want to do is figure out how to be able to get there. So the first thing before we go anywhere is to be able to click on some of these buttons to show you what they do or just to explain what they do. The first is this one, and this changes how your sessions are represented. Right now I have them shown as a list, but I can also show them as an agenda if I want to be able to see during the day when I actually ran. And that just sort of puts it into sort of like a diary, a calendar, an agenda type of format. If I go back to that as a list view, the next one over is probably the most important one for being able to navigate your sessions quickly because it'll really lead into the rest of the conversation. So I'm going to leave that to last. Here, however, you have the option of importing new sessions, especially if you uh, happen to have uh, received a file from someone, you can use this button or this button. Similarly, you can open a selected session. This is going to be useful when you want to open two sessions together. Um, you can change the properties. The properties are representative of when you download the file and you can say, this was me, James, I was the driver at this track. These are the notes I want to write, but you can add additional ones if you want to. Uh, you can export the file. You can delete or erase the file or the session. You can send it to AIM if you want them to have a look at something that's not right. And similarly, these last two are associated with the session in terms of math channels and track uh, database. And we'll cover that in a later uh, seminar, or I should say tutorial, not seminar, we'll do a tutorial. And so I want to go back uh, in terms of navigating your sessions to this button here. It looks like an empty square right now, and it really is just representing this big square that is here. But one of the things you might want to see is more information about each of the sessions as you quickly navigate through. So if I click here, I can go and see uh, a preview of the session in two ways. Now, the first option uh, a lot of people like because it allows you to put your data going from left to right. Here's the event, here's the session, and here's the information about the particular uh, session itself. Similarly, I like it uh, where you do it so it's event, the session, and then you have more space at the bottom here to see all the information. But again, that's user preference to be able to find the data about that file. So once you've loaded that up, it's going to give you a quick preview 
of all of the information about the session. So it makes it easier to be able to navigate or learn a little bit more about what's happening. And to be able to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to move down here to these buttons at the bottom. Now, by default, it should move to the option, which is the laps report. And here it'll just give you some information about your laps that are here. You can filter out sort of the time on each of the laps by holding the button down. If I drag this out to all laps, it'll extend the time in terms of the view and bring in sort of the in lap and the out lap. And so this chart here will get a bit messy. I can also zoom this back and make it so it's really representing the laps that I ran. And this is nice because you can see how far apart and spread they are and look at the most consistent laps uh, for lap time. Similarly, I have this option here, it's called Map. And again, this is where you can start seeing the beauty of the Race Studio 3 analysis software and what's been integrated in. Because if I click there, you'll notice that I get a quick preview of the laps overlaid on top of Google Earth. And I don't just have to use Google Earth. And we'll cover that in a later tutorial as we get into more of the sessions themselves. Similarly, if you keep clicking here, you have something called weather information, which I personally love because it gives you data about a session you may have logged a couple of years ago that may be associated with what were the ambient temperatures, what were information associated with, was it raining, was it drizzling, what all the information was available. And interestingly, this weather data over time will allow you to build math channels as well, if you're so inclined to do so, that may bring in some of that weather data. Now, at this point, I might stress that if you want to see the weather data, it's uh, only available to those people who log in. And so it's one of those advantages of being able to see that information. Um, similarly, if I go across to the right hand side uh, and keep going, this is going to show me some information associated with what AIM device was used to log the data. Now on this top session, um, you can see here that the data was used was uh, logging through uh, my Evo 4S, which I had an additional sort of um, uh, CAN expansion. I had uh, Lambda data. I have a uh, Smarty Cam Formula Wheel and a GPS 09, all available. But if I go to this session, for example, it will tell me that that was recorded with a Solo 2. So it'll help me understand which devices were used as that data was recorded, review of each of the sessions. Now, the final button I'm going to show you in the last part of this particular tutorial is to look at this button here which is called the lap summary. And this allows you to add some data, which will allow you to quickly glance at something that you may want to be able to see without having to open up every file. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is that what I've got associated here is I've got information and what I've done is I've clicked on add remove, I've clicked on add, and here I can type in RPM, which is what I added, and it gives me the option of adding in the max RPM. And you can add any of these channels. I've just used that one for illustrative purposes and real life purposes, and I'll show you why. Now, what I want to see is I knew when I was out on track, I had an overrev, but I couldn't remember which session I did the overrev in. And so what I can see here is I can quickly scroll through each of the particular sessions and find out and an overrev for me um, is anything over 7,500 RPM, anything between 7,000 7, is uh, pay attention, um, this isn't healthy, and anything below is okay. So what I've done is I've added this in, and as I scroll through, there's, you know, that session's not too bad. If I click on this session, you know, that's where it is. And you can see there is the over rev that is right there. I found that straight away just by looking at a particular piece of information from each session, rather than having to go into each of them one by one and going, was it this one or was it this one or open them all together and scroll through. It's just a nice way of being able to navigate that particular information. I'm sure you'll find a potential use for this as well for you as well. Now that's the end of this uh, tutorial, looking at the test database. The next one, hopefully, which will be in the playlist um, or you'll find it uh, on the channel. We'll talk about once you actually open up the session file, what we're gonna start looking at in relation to looking at the data and looking at the sessions that you've run. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if there's anything we've missed on here, please comment on the box below so we can sort of work through it. And with that, it just leaves me to say thanks so much for watching this video.